Hey guys, I'm just going to make another video here of my cassette collection. I just got to turn on some fucking music here. Uh, one second. So, yeah, basically I've been watching Goro Stern videos all day, and I got in the mood to make like another cassette video. I just got to probably... What should I throw on? Fucking... Uh, speed, speed Breaker will do it. Speed breaker will keep uh, this fucking thing going here. I just gotta throw on their CD, actually. One second, guys. See, I've been listening, watching a bunch of Goro Stern videos. He's a pretty cool dude. Uh, I'll probably chuck a link to his channel down in the description, so check him out. And, let me just turn that on. There you go. Okay. First cassette is Tug of War by Paul McCartney. Uh, not a huge Paul McCartney fan, much bigger Beatles fan. I'm not even a huge Beatles fan. Um, so, like, so to say, I'm not really a huge Beatles fan, but you know, they're alright. The Beatles are obviously classic as fuck, so you can't really deny the Beatles at all. They're obviously a classic band. Um, Paul McCartney. Tripping the Live, Fantastic Highlights. Uh, I think this is just like a live collection of some sort. I'd never listened to it before, so I won't be able to tell you. Um, Paul McCart McCartney's um, Off the Ground. This is his 1993 album, so later in his career. I don't agree with my Paul McCartney's views. Like, he. He's really into PETA and shit. I just don't, I couldn't give less of a fuck about all that shit. Uh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam's 10. I give a fuck about the animals, I just don't give a fuck about his way of going about saving the animals. Like, I don't like PETA. In general, PETA just seems like a fucking shit company to me. Uh, Pearl Jam Versus. This is like fucking dirty as hell, like the case is, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, versus um, Pete Townsend, White City, a novel. I just looked in my that um versus case and I for, I forgot. Um, it's been like two or three years since I've actually looked in this case, and it actually has Vitology in it. If you can see that thing. So yeah, I probably. If I ever find a case for Vitology, obviously, great, I have a Vitology uh, complete, but whatever. I'll just probably find uh, the cassette to go in that. Uh, this is interesting, this is a Greek copy of Dark Side the Moon by Pink Floyd. Uh, it's on EMI and Harvest uh, labels, but uh, yeah, this is a Greek copy. I, I looked it up on Discogs. It's really, the packaging is basic and pretty bland. Overall, like, um, let me just see here. But it is an original because it says also on 8-track. And it has, um, a warning, please allow so I want this cassette to run to the end of tape, uh, uh, the end of tape in order to allow track one of side two to commence at the beginning of the track. So basically, play your fucking tape all the way through. And uh, this tape looks a lot different than most tapes I own. The type on it is really, really small. But um, you can see at the bottom there it says um, Made in Greece by EMI. Sorry, that's not clearing up very well, but yeah, it says Made in Greece by EMI. So yeah, that's cool. I've seen one copy of it on Discogs going for $90. I don't think it's worth $90, but it's definitely a rarity. This is, um, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. This is just basically the American, or no, this is the Canadian version. Let's see, um, I play the Canadian version. If I ever listen to this album on cassette, which I rarely do, because I have the CD box set with all the Pink Floyd albums, which I will showcase at some point um, in a separate video. I won't put it in my CD collection. Or I'll show the box set, like just like hold up the box set. I won't take every CD out. I'll do the box set in the full video at some point. 
I got that um, for a really cheap price actually, I think I gave a guy five or six CDs that I didn't really pay much for and he just gave it to me, I guess he, he already had two copies and the one he had, he had two uh, two copies of it, one of them was from his um, mom and dad and one of them was from his nan and I guess he just wanted to get rid of one of them so he just gave, so it gave it to me basically for nothing. Um, Pink Floyd, The Wall. This is obviously a classic album. This cassette is not in the best shape. Like the actual tape is worn the fuck. As you can see, most of the print is gone. But whatever. A lot of these are garage sale boys. So 25 cents, 50 cents a tape. You're not expecting top quality. Uh, Pink Floyd, Momentary Lapse of Reason. I'm surprised I found this actually. This is not obviously not one of the most popular albums. Well, I guess in the 80s, this is. Everyone went out and bought the new Pink Floyd album because anything by Pink Floyd was basically fucking amazing to everyone. Although I don't really like this album a lot. I think it's pretty mediocre, but what can you say? It's Pink Floyd. Some people think everything they've made is classic, even like the, the 80s shit, which I really don't like a lot. It's okay, but it's definitely forgettable as fuck. Uh, so yeah, I, if I didn't mention, we're listening to these guys, Speedbreaker. Uh, check them out, they're really good. 2014 uh, Black Speed Heavy Thrash, you could say. It's all over the map. But yeah, obviously if you like Venom, if you like um, any kind of black speed metal, uh, bulldozer or shit like that, you'll like you like these guys. Uh, Delicate Sound of Thunder, uh, tape one. This is live. I'll just show one because they both have similar packaging. They're basically just really purple. Sorry if you hear a bit of background noise, guys. Uh, my window is open because it's warm as shit today, and there's like some kind of construction or like shit going on outside, so. If you can hear that, I'm sorry about that, but this is all I can do. Uh, Delicate Sound Thunder. Uh, I think this is tape number two, if I'm correct. Or maybe these are just the same release, so I can't remember. Oh, I cannot remember at all. No, this is side three, so it's, it's the same release, but it's part of a box set. I, I just don't remember this album at all. I mean, that's basically the most cheesy 1980s artwork, and as you can see, cheesy as fuck looking. But yeah, Pink Floyd in the 80s is really forgettable. I don't. After um, the Wall, you could really forget about them up until Division Bell. So yeah. I'm not a huge fan of these guys at all, but I just have it in my collection because I think it was blowing my um, parents. Platinum Blonde, Standing in the Dark. I don't really like Platinum Blonde at all, but it's in there for some reason. I'll probably give that away to somebody. I don't even, I don't even know why it's there. And the next few, I know I'm probably going to get ragged down a bunch by um, True Metal Army members or some fucking shit. True Metal Cult. I don't give a fuck. I don't like much of, this, much of these guys' stuff. I don't like every song, but I like two or three. And most of the st glam stuff I do own, the really, really glammy stuff, is I own it because my girlfriend likes it, and we listen to it when she comes over. Because I can, I can deal with it. It's not bad at all, in my opinion. Uh, poison. Look at what the cat dragged in. That's not a bad album. Um, open up and say ah. Uh, uh, the cassette single for something to believe in. And flesh and blood. These are all easy as fuck to find at thrift stores. So that's why I had them really. Uh, per the the Pretenders, uh, the, the singles, um, I don't know much about these guys, I just had this from my parents, so I'll probably have to check them out more in depth at some point.
or yes, okay. Um, the Queen, greatest hits. This is from I think it's from eighty, yeah, eighty one. So yeah, the Queen is obviously classic. Uh, Queen's most hated album, Hot Space. Uh, not a terrible album, in my opinion. I actually like this album a bit. Michael Jackson was uh, really close friends with Freddie Mercury, and I think Freddie um, got a little bit of influence from Michael. I wouldn't say a lot, but that's why I think that album is different. Um, this is more of like a return to form almost. But this came out, uh, what? This came out in 84, and this one came out in 83, I believe. No, this was 82. The Works. They return more to their classic sound with this album, in my opinion. I always kind of thought, I never was deep into the discography of Queen after the 70s, and for some reason I thought this was the greatest hit, because it just said The Works, so and I'm like, oh, that seems like probably like the work, like their work, so. Yeah. My stupidity there. Uh, next is, I'll just take this out of the case, make it easier. Made in Heaven, the last album by Queen with Freddie. And what really I consider the last album by Queen. Because what kind of Queen can you have without Freddie Mercury, in all honesty? And this fucking J card is huge as fuck. Has pictures and stuff. I think Freddie was basically the only singer that Queen could have that would work 100%. They've gotten newer singers, um, I can't remember the guy's name now, but he was in Bad Company, and they had, um, uh, well, I can't remember past that, I think they've had another person, and then they had Adam Lambert, uh, I'm not gonna fucking talk about that, because fuck that shit. Adam Lambert, not a terrible singer, but, no, he doesn't fit clean at all. And I actually just got a new copy. This oh, one second, guys. I'll get you something there to show you. This is my first album I ever owned on cassette, right here. And just the other day, I found a new copy. But I'll just show you my first copy, just to show you how bad this was like. This when I got it, so it's not like I was a fucking stupid kid and I beat up all my cassettes. You can already see it's fucking old as shit. And then that's ripped right there. It was probably stuck to the case at some point. And up here is all ripped up and shit. And then the back looks fucking terrible as fuck. But yeah, this was my first cassette. And I played the shit out of this album. Like, fucking bang your head. Come on, feel the noise. Uh, fucking battle axe. Slick black Cadillac. Loves a bitch. Like, Jesus. All these songs are fucking just classic as shit. I know Quiet Rod kind of gets glumped in with the glam side of shit, but they're not glam in my opinion. And just recently I got a brand new copy of it almost, like basically mint, so that's pretty cool. The only thing I just bad about it is the tape is, the, the writing is a bit worn, but that's okay. Everything else on it is mint, so yeah. For a dollar to replace one of the most beat up cassettes in my collection, if not the most beat up one, that's okay with me. And that's really the only album by them that gets any uh, talk, like any like plubis uh, publicity or whatever. Like that's the only popular album they have. Um, I think that's probably their best album. But this is this is also a pretty decent album in my opinion. Quiet Right Three. I find it funny because they had Quiet Right One and Two uh, that were only released in Japan, and they had Randy Rhodes on them. Man, I don't think those albums have even gotten a really good re-release in, uh, in a long time. But yeah, it it's just, this is a decent album. Not really talked about at all. So yeah, it's quite right, so you can't really shit on that. Quite right's pretty good. So yeah, quite right. Uh, so that's it for this video, guys. I don't really have anything else to show you. Um, so my next video, this has been the P and Q's, so next video will probably end up being uh, my R's and S's, or maybe I might just do, um, yeah, R's and S's, it'll probably be a longer video, because I, have a, I think I have a bit more S's than uh, 
then like I have a P's and Q's. So yeah, sorry for a lot of fucking pauses in this video and shit. I'm just tired of shit. I had like six hours of sleep before I record this. So yeah, peace the fuck out, guys, and have a great day.